John Bird is the driver of the Georgia Tech Ramblin' Wreck. It's his job to maintain and transport this 1930 Ford Model A. He often spends more than 20 hours a week in this garage keeping the wreck running. But these days, this garage is empty. I would usually come down here almost every day um, just to be, be around the car and look at it and work in here for a few things. Uh, and now I just, I can't come down here at all. On June 22nd, John and his brother were towing the wreck to an appearance at a Tech alumni wedding in Savannah. We were going about 70 miles an hour and uh, the steering wheel just pulled 90 degrees and uh, we crossed three lanes of traffic and uh, we hit the ditch and the trailer tipped over. Um, basically the wreck fell onto its side and, and smashed into the roof of the trailer and that's what happened to the wreck. No one was injured, but the Ramblin' Wreck was totaled just 10 weeks before the first football game. On September 8th, Bobby Dodd Stadium will be filled with fans expecting to see the wreck lead the Yellow Jackets onto the field. The number one concern is, okay, what's the, you know, what's the damage, and, uh, and do we still get to keep this piece of, of tech tradition? We're 40 plus years now with this car bringing Georgia Tech onto the field. While Tech fans struggle to imagine a game without the wreck, the crash was celebrated by some fans of Tech's arch enemy, the University of Georgia. There was a bounty out for pictures. I got terrible phone calls and terrible emails. They just wanted to wish me not well. I don't know how you would say that. It definitely reinforces that rivalry, and it definitely reinforces the fact that I don't have a single drop of red anything at my house or in my personal possessions. I don't. I can't stand the University of Georgia anymore, anymore at all. In the ACC or in the Southeast in particular, or Army, Navy, or any other good rivalry, uh, Tech and Georgia both like it when the other guys, you know, hurting a little bit. That's all the, the good fun, I guess, that comes with it. Now, you know, Tech takes this car seriously, though. I mean, this is a, a piece of the, the Institute's tradition in a lot of ways. It's more than just a car. There's a mystique behind it that you don't want to tarnish. And you don't want UGA fans putting it on a t-shirt. We don't want people degrading it in that way. The wreck's current condition is a secret guarded by both Bird and the university. Our CSTV camera crew was the first allowed to shoot at the site of the restoration. But we had to agree not to shoot the wreck in its entirety and not show the full extent of the damage. But this much is obvious. The wreck is still unrecognizable but Bird remains hopeful that it will be ready for game day. It really does give us a reason to fix it up and get it running. It's gonna be in much better condition now, after the restoration and after all the repairs than it was before the accident. While Bird has had the key to the wreck since January, he still awaits his first chance to drive it into a football game. After the drama of his tenure thus far, he's more than eager for a home opener and a highly anticipated wreck debut. As far as I've been told by old, old drivers, the greatest feeling, the greatest rush you get is for that big game and leading the team out on the field. It'll be, it'll be great, I think, when it, when it comes out.